Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. I hope you all are doing well. As you can see, I did recently switch up my filming setup and background, and the reason I wanted to do that is just to give you guys something more interesting to look at. I don't want it to just be a wall behind a couch. And I'm not done yet with this background, but I do really like how it's coming along, and I'm actually feeling a lot more inspired to film now. I really wanted the background of my videos to reflect what I'm talking about, which is often fragrance, but I also wanted it to represent different parts of my personality, and the overall aesthetic I was going for is very floral, feminine, and fantasy inspired, so I hope that translates on screen, and I hope you guys like it. But overall, I do think that this looks a lot better than just a wall with some ivy hanging on it. So yeah, with all that being said, let's get right on into today's video. I picked up this Jo Malone Discovery set during this last Sephora VIB sale, and I did mention that I purchased this in my last video, which was the haul from the sale. But since then, I've been testing out these Jo Malone samples for the past week and forming my opinions on them so I can talk about them with you guys. So I want to start off with my overall opinion of Jo Malone now that I've had the chance to test out some of their most iconic fragrances. And overall, my opinion of the brand is that they make really lovely, light, fresh, floral and fruity fragrances, and at least all the fragrances that I tried out from this brand are all technically colognes. Now the reason I bring that up is because of the performance of these fragrances. So there's three main categories that most designer and niche fragrances fall under, and those categories are Eau de Parfum, Eau de Toilette, and Eau de Cologne. And Eau de Cologne is actually the lightest fragrance of all of these three categories, meaning that it has the least amount of perfume oil in it. So an Eau de Cologne is not going to perform like an Eau de Parfum because it has a lot less of that concentrated perfume oil. What I found when testing these out is that each of these fragrances are really beautiful. They smell very natural. They smell exactly like the fruits and flowers that are supposed to be in the perfumes. That being said, I just want to be upfront with you guys that these fragrances are not going to perform like an Eau de Parfum. On my skin, they last at most three hours. We're talking two to three hours, and that's with applying a generous amount of fragrance. So to me, I see these as great fragrances that you can spritz on when you're just trying to freshen up and you're in hot weather and you just want to smell natural and fresh. I remember that one of the first things I heard about the Jo Malone fragrances is that the royal family often wears these scents. Specifically, Meghan Markle and Kate Middleton have both talked about wearing Jo Malone fragrances in interviews, and they both have their favorites. And overall, I see the Jo Malone brand as being very classy and elegant, and I have to say I really have been enjoying testing out these samples because they are really refreshing and pretty scents. So let's go ahead and dive in a little bit deeper and talk about each of these fragrances individually. Okay, so the fragrance I'm going to start with is definitely my favorite from this discovery set, and that is Wood Sage and Sea Salt. When I first sprayed this, I was actually blown away. I think it's such a beautiful, refreshing, unique scent. I don't typically like marine, oceanic scents, but there's something about this one that I absolutely love and I actually want a full bottle of it. It's really that beautiful. So I'm gonna go ahead and spray this and remind myself what it smells like. This is just gorgeous. I don't know how they got this scent into a bottle, but they did. It's so refreshing. To me, it literally smells like an ocean breeze, but the best version of that that you could possibly imagine. Not only did I really enjoy wearing this on myself, but I also told my boyfriend that I would love if he wore this. I think this is such a nice unisex perfume that really is going to smell amazing on anyone. And I do also want to mention that in my experience, this is the one that lasted the longest on my skin, and I felt it projected the best. I definitely got whiffs of myself. That being said, this is not a long-lasting perfume, but out of all the ones I tried, I'd say this is the best performing one. So getting into the notes of wood, sage, and sea salt, you have sea salt, sage, grapefruit, ambrette, or musk mallow, and seaweed. Whenever I see seaweed as a note in a fragrance, 
I get a little hesitant because I don't particularly want to smell like seaweed, but the way they did it in this perfume is just perfect. The musk in here is also really, really pretty. It's just such a fresh, clean musk smell. Definitely one of my favorite fresh scents I've ever smelled. And that's saying a lot because I've smelled a lot of perfumes. So again, that one is wood sage and sea salt. You know what else this reminds me of? And maybe it's the whole royal family thing, but these remind me of Bridgerton. And I've seen the first episode of season one. I really need to get into Bridgerton because I know it's the kind of show that I would fall in love with. But anyways, the next fragrance I'm gonna be talking about is English Pear and Freesia. Now, I love the scent of Freesia. I'm not the biggest fan of pear scents just because I find that pear is in literally everything these days. And pear smells good to me. I like it. I just feel like it's a little bit overdone. So this one is very nice. It doesn't particularly stand out to me as something I'd want to wear. That being said, I think it's really pretty and I would love smelling it on somebody else. I think it's just a really nice, fresh, floral, fruity scent. To me, it's just nothing too special or unique. It's nothing that I feel I haven't smelled before, but it is really refreshing and pretty and great for spring and summer. The top notes are pear and melon. The middle notes are freesia and rose, and the base notes are musk, patchouli, rhubarb, and amber. Again, I think this one is very pretty, very refreshing. It leans a little bit more feminine, a little bit more floral. Yeah, that is English Pear and Freesia. Okay, next fragrance I'm going to talk about is Peony and Blush Suede. And a little fun fact about me is that my favorite flower is a peony. I think they're absolutely beautiful. I love how they smell. And growing up, I had peonies in my backyard, so I think I just have something sentimental with them. But this fragrance is different than how I imagined it would smell when I read the name. One of my favorite fresh florals is Miss Dior Blooming Bouquet, and I think I was expecting it to smell like that because that's my favorite peony perfume. This one is a little bit different, so let's go ahead and spray this. Mm. So this one is a little bit sweeter. I actually want to look at the notes because to me I'm getting like a, a white floral vibe in here as well. I haven't actually looked at the notes yet. Let's see. Okay, yes, it does have jasmine in it, so that makes sense. Because I'm definitely getting a deeper white floral scent, kind of like a heady white floral, and that's definitely coming from the jasmine. The top note is red apple, the middle notes are peony, rose, jasmine, and carnation, and the base note is suede. So it has kind of a leather animalic vibe as well. Yeah, the leather is there, it's just very subdued. And I do think the way this smells is really nice. Hmm, the more I smell it, the more I actually like it. It definitely smells more mature to me. It's just like a very sweet floral with a little bit of powderiness, a little bit of leather vibes in there. When I had my boyfriend smell this, he said something very similar. He said it smelled older or more mature, but he did say that it smelled nice as well. Again, this is not one that I would go out and purchase myself, but I would enjoy smelling it on somebody else. I think it's very pretty. It kind of reminds me of a high tea, and I do love a good high tea. That is Peony and Blush Suede. Okay, and moving on to my other favorite in this discovery set, which is Wild Bluebell. And this one, you guys, I think is so pretty. It actually reminds me of Twilight, specifically the meadow scene in Twilight, where Bella and Edward are laying in the meadow and they have all the purple and blue flowers around them. This is what I picture in my head when I smell this. This one is just so nice to me. It smells like a beautiful woodland forest with wild bluebells and berries. This just smells like a fairy tale to me. I need this in my life. To be honest, you guys, I feel like this would be such a pretty bridal scent, especially for the type of wedding I'm trying to have, which is an outdoor forest wedding. Okay, so the top note is bellflower, dewdrop, green leaves, and clove. The middle notes are persimmon and peach, and the base notes are musk and powdery notes. These are the cutest notes I've ever seen. Dewdrop, 
I didn't know that Dewdrop was a note. That's so cute. Mmm. Similar to the wood sage and sea salt, when I first smelled this, it really like took me aback. It smells so pretty. Maybe this one is my favorite. I love it. I want wood sage and sea salt and wild bluebell, and these are not cheap fragrances, but they are very beautiful, and I can definitely see the hype with Jo Malone. Moving on to the last fragrance in this discovery set. This one is Nectarine Blossom and Honey Cologne. And this is probably the one I was least excited to try. I like nectarines, I love eating nectarines, but for some reason I don't really want to smell like a nectarine. In general, I'm not really someone who wants to smell like straight up fruit, like pear or nectarine. If I'm gonna go for a fresh fragrance like that, I'm gonna go for something more floral, musky. It has to have something to it other than just the fruit. But wow, I've used almost this entire sample. That's because when I tested this one, I really was trying to get a feel for it because it kept disappearing. Because again, the eau de colognes, they just don't last as long as the perfumes that I'm used to, so I was spraying it a lot. But this one I found is really refreshing and clean smelling. I was pleasantly surprised by this one. When I had Tanner smell this one, he said it smelled like one of those face washes that you get from the drugstore called Clean Burst. And I actually think that's pretty accurate, but in a good way. But this to me just smells very clean, like you just showered, you used some kind of fruity shampoo, and you just walk in the room and just smell fresh and clean. Having a perfume on hand that smells like that is really nice, especially for those super hot days in the summer. And if you love nectarines, this is definitely one to check out because it does smell exactly like a real nectarine. Okay, so the top notes are green notes, black currant, and petite grain. The middle notes are nectarine and black locust and the base notes are peach, plum, and vetiver. So lots of very sweet, fruity, and juicy notes in here. I will say I love blackcurrant, and I tend to love perfumes that have blackcurrant in them, so maybe that's why I was pleasantly surprised by this perfume. So overall, Nectarine Blossom and Honey is a great juicy and fruity out of the shower scent. So that is all I have for this Jo Malone Fragrance Discovery Set review. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. You can also follow me over on Instagram and TikTok, and I would love to hear in the comments which Jo Malone fragrances are your favorites or which ones you'd be most excited to try. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!